Mold Remediation Guidelines for Confined Spaces Working in confined areas presents numerous challenges. Movement and communication are difficult, and, in case of an emergency, immediate exit from the area may be difficult or impossible. The air in some confined spaces may be contaminated or low in oxygen, posing significant health risks for workers. Additionally, poor lighting may result in increased risk of injuries. Before remediating mold in a confined space, the area should be evaluated for atmospheric hazards and presence of other toxic substances. If there is any chance of low oxygen levels, the area should be tested using the appropriate equipment. The testing equipment should be kept on-site and used periodically to ensure an adequate oxygen supply. If the area is sealed off from the rest of the building to prevent the spread of mold spores, oxygen testing should be conducted again after the area has been sealed. A frequent contaminant in crawl spaces and pipe chases of older buildings is asbestos. Other chemicals, such as natural gas and solvents, can also be found in some confined spaces. These materials must be identified and dealt with properly to prevent worker exposure during remediation operations. Once the hazards have been identified, procedures for working in the confined space should be included in the remediation plan. Special consideration should be given to who will be allowed into the area, how communications will be maintained, what materials can be taken into or used in the space, and what safety equipment is necessary. Worker safety must be carefully considered when deciding whether to use disinfectants or biocides because confined spaces may increase the potential for exposure. Work in confined spaces should be conducted only by trained professionals who have the equipment required by OSHA to deal with the inherent dangers in this type of environment. An attendant should be posted outside of the confined space area to summon help if necessary. The area should be well lit so that work can be conducted efficiently and injuries avoided. In conducting mold remediation, every effort should be made to keep dust and mold out of the air. This can be done by using moist techniques, such as using a damp cloth or pad for mold removal, and by bagging the mold-contaminated materials in the confined space for later removal. Because exposures may be greatly magnified in a confined space, a higher level of personal protective equipment would be required than when working in an open and more accessible area. Most cases would require full personal protective equipment, including skin and eye protection, and full respiratory protection using a full face respirator or a powered air purifying respirator with a HEPA filter. The presence of asbestos may require additional personal protective equipment for workers, as well as monitoring and medical evaluation as specified in relevant OSHA standards for the construction industry and the general industry.